press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update. Welcome back. Now, it sent a probe 33 million miles across the solar system to Mars for less than it cost to make the film Gravity. Just one of the incredible achievements made by the Mars Orbiter mission launched in November 2013 by the Indian Space Research Organization. Well, the head of that mission is here with us. So too is an aspiring astronaut because we're going to talk about space exploration for the next few minutes and how to inspire the next generation of scientists. So before that, let me just remind you, though, of the moment India gate crashed the space party. Mamita Duta was the project manager of that Mars mission and Susie Imber is a space scientist and the winner of the BBC's recent programme, Astronauts, Have You Got What It Takes? So welcome both of you to the programme. Uh, Mamita, first of all to you and that extraordinary moment, all that clapping in the centre, a really historic moment. What was that like? Yeah, it was a very exciting moment for all of us. That uh, that uh, picture that just now we have seen, that was the moment of launching when the uh, first Mars mission was launched and India made it at its first attempt. And uh, when actually, so it took 300 days from the Earth to the Mars journey. And then it was within a 50 kilometer of Mars and it was supposed to be captured by the Mars gravity. And it was a very critical moment and Mars orbit insertion itself was a very critical operation. And it took 26 minutes for that. And presumably along the way so many things could have gone wrong on this and as you yeah. were saying, I mean India did this extraordinarily cheaply by comparison to NASA. Correct. We had the first attempt but so much could have gone wrong. Yes, yes, there are so many things because we have to communicate uh, up to 400 million kilometers. It was at so, such a long distance, we had three antennas for that. And also, actually, a slight error in this navigation could have jeopardized the mission. But everything went so well. And another thing is that that uh, there will be contingency situation in this kind of mission. So the, the, the instrument that uh, spacecraft was equipped with onboard autonomy, that means while in contingency situation series of commands are loaded in advance and the spacecraft is capable to execute it one by one very precisely and accurately so there will be time when the spacecraft will go behind the mars so there is no way to communicate yeah. with so the all Earth. manner of yeah. difficulties so, susie correct. for someone so immersed in space exploration i mean to, to see a moment like that uh, india makes such a leap it's quite something isn't it with with so much attention from all of us now on missions to mars Oh no, absolutely. I mean, Mars is at the center of what we're looking at in the future now. And to have India launch their first mission and it be such a success. I mean, what a step forward for your space program. I think it was incredible. Now, I mentioned in the introduction yes. that program that you were part of, Astronauts, do you have what it takes for you? You did what it had, because you won. Yes. I mean, what was it like being involved in something like that? That whole experience was incredible for me because it's not something you normally have a chance to do. The, the experience to, to try out all these tests of being a real astronaut is and there you are, look on the screen. Really amazing. Oh, there I am, yes, flying, <laughs> floating on a plane. I mean, yeah, this was incredible. And, and to have a real NASA astronaut alongside us, experiencing with us and teaching us some of the things that, that he had, had picked up during his time in space. And is this something you've always been fascinated in, space and science? Yeah, space and science and from since a very young age, yeah. I think I wanted to be a scientist for a long time, so, yes. Mubita, tell me your, your background. I mean, here you are heading the mission, but um, have you always been fascinated by by space exploration I, uh, science? Yeah, 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 actually not in my childhood in fact, but uh, uh, someday when, when I was pursuing my Master of Technology in Applied Physics, that time one day I came across the news that India is launching its first lunar mission. And uh, that time I became very excited and I, I, I thought that what is, what, uh, what is a great achievement my country is going to have. And so from that point onwards I wanted to join Indian Space Research Organization to pursue research on space. And then a time came when I tracked the interview and got into this, got into Space Research Organization, and wonderfully I got that opportunity to work in the Chandrayaan 1 mission, that means first lunar mission. Yeah, so and then went on to, to head this Mars mission. I, I mean, tell me about the impact it has had, because I know both of you are, are really involved with trying to inspire the younger generation, the next generation Correct. of scientists. What impact Correct. has this mission, your success with yeah. Mars, had? Yeah, yeah. The, uh, see, it had a huge impact created in the general public 
of India first. And more importantly, it has created huge impact among the students. The students are enthusiastic and very much excited to join Indian Space Program and they want to join Indian Space Research Organization because they have started to see it as a potential domain of enormous opportunities to create great engineering marvels. And well, well, it's, it's young scientists around the world because Susie's uh, yeah. students have uh, been actually sending questions in. They knew that uh, you'd be on with Susie today. And so <laughs> they've sent in some questions. So I want to just put uh, the first one up, which was from Scott Davis. So uh, let's hear Scott's question to you. Yeah. How much is this project just a part of national pride for India? And how much are we looking for in the future for collaboration internationally? Yeah, thank you, Scott, for your question. Uh, I would like to say that uh, that international collaboration, Mars Orbit Formation, was a completely indigenous developed. It is developed by all the subsystems, all the ground system, the rocket, the spacecraft, the instrument. So all were developed indigenously in India. But we are we were, we had international collaboration in past, and we are having it now also. Like in Chandrayaan One, many of the instruments from NASA, from ESA, was flown, and also. So many of the satellites we are launching from different countries. Just in recent past, we have launched 104 satellites, and there were satellites from USA, there were satellites from Netherlands, and then Kazakhstan, then Israel. So that's why so you sort of, of that's why I use that phrase, gate crashing the space party. India really has. So I've got another question from Elspeth, right. Elspeth <laughs> Lewis. Uh, yeah. Let's hear what she has to ask. It's an interesting right. one. This one. Yes. The question that I would ask the project manager, the Indian Space Research Organization, is what is so different about the Mars orbiter mission, and why should be so what's exciting and how did you make it so cheap out of interest? Yeah, correct. So how it made it, so first I will answer the question how it made it so cheap. So the thing is that that uh, we that uh, if we want to make it in very low budget, we have to take care of the fuel. So the whole trajectory was designed so that it takes the minimum fuel to reach from Earth to Mars. So for that a very precise trajectory was designed and another thing is that this kind of trajectory happens only in 780 days because, because it requires a certain angle between Earth, Mars and uh, the Sun. So this opportunity comes in only in 780 days and this trajectory enables us to launch the Mars mission in minimum fuel. And I was t looking at uh, all... just comments from one yeah. British uh, space scientist who said it is is really the hottest topic working out uh, methane gases uh, on Mars and that is exactly what you've been doing. Susie, let me come back to you because uh, this program, you know, is all about trying to be an astronaut. Before I ask you the next question, I just want to play something that perhaps viewers will be familiar with. Have a look at this. Ground control to Major Tom. Commencing countdown engines on. from station and may God's love be with you. Well, Susie smiling because that went viral, <laughs> didn't it, yeah. when uh, Chris Hatfield was there Absolutely. in space. And it, it was fascinating because you got to know him very well on this program. He has written a personal recommendation for you, for the European Space Agency, when they get to do the next uh, choice and pick to be the next astronaut, he wants it to be you. Yes. How hopeful are you that it will be you? Well, I mean, it's a, it's a great advantage, isn't it, to have a letter from a real astronaut recommending me to the programme. That's, that's a brilliant step forward. We don't know when that will be. Um, the last call was almost 10 years ago now for astronauts when Tim Peake was selected. So we don't know when the next call will be. But and, and we were talking earlier about inspiration. It was fascinating with the Tim Peake mission. So yeah. the schools got involved. And I know that is something that you really are very, very closely hooked up to. Just uh, the youngsters being inspired by what they are seeing and the sort of leaps that are being made. I mean, I think that was part of the beauty of the programme, actually, was that it was aired on national television. People got a chance to see what it really takes to be an astronaut and to imagine themselves in that situation. So, um, yeah, I think that was incredible. We're nearly out of time, so let me quickly ask you about your next mission. I know we were talking a moment or two. It is to the moon, is that right? Yeah, the second mission, the next mission is the second mission to moon. Already we have launched the first moon mission in 2008. And uh, the greatest discovery of that mission was finding all water molecules on the lunar surface. Earlier, many missions have been made. Many probe went on around that. And but quickly, are, are there spin-offs that people now are actually feeling? Because the obvious question is, well, India, you look at it, it has so many sort of domestic problems, you could be spending their money on. Are there spin-offs now on the ground for your country? 
Uh, yeah, actually, there are many new technologies that we are exploring, uh, that and we are actually thinking to implement in Chandrayaan two mission. Like Chandrayaan two mission will be a controlled landing. We will have a lander and a rover, and the rover will be equipped with many of the instruments, which will be doing some good experiments on the mission on the lunar surface. And uh, as the the as you told about the money and all, so I will like to say that it is very uh, necessary to welcome the people to have the new challenges in the mission. All right, Susie, you've got about 20 seconds. Tell me, is this something you can teach or is it absolutely in you from the beginning to, to be an explorer, to, to, to get involved in all of these things? Oh, I think it's a combination. I think some people like me have always wanted to do this kind of thing, be an explorer, go to new places. But I also think that watching someone else's journey can inspire other people to think about what they could do. Susie, Amita, we are out of time, but it's been absolutely fascinating talking to both of you. Thank you so much for joining us here on the programme.